Hello, can you hear me? Hello. Yes. Hello. Hello. I'm here. Paris is here. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Okay. okay great. Hi, you Bessie, how are you? Very good. And Kid, how are you? Thank you I'm for organizing this. Yeah. Okay. So it must be early morning. No, that's okay. That's okay. I, you, okay. I think this isn't this is not a big deal. This is a time to get to get work done, really. So it's not okay. a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Thanks yeah. for giving us this time. No, no, it's it's my pleasure, really. Thank for organizing this. This is important, yes. really. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, do you want to try the uh, the the share the video, the uh, uh, the, the presentation? Like, like uh, video, which video? No, no, presentation. You want to try presentation to see how everything works. Apeksha, how you are going to do that? The the PowerPoint PowerPoint. Do you want the PowerPoint link? PPT? Yeah, PPT. So I think, oh, I, I need to share my screen. Okay, I see, I see, I, I got okay, it. You can share your screen now. Yeah, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. I just, where's the, uh, yeah, so I just share my screen. Okay, so I think this is the one I want to share. Okay, so I'll make a full screen mode. Can you see? Can you see the can you see the PPT? No, not yet. Oh. So maybe I share did I share the screen already? Did you no. see anything? No. Any of my screen. Oh what's what's the Yes, now we can see. Oh, okay, okay, great, great. Now you can see. Okay, so I think we're going to make it the full screen. Is it okay? Yes, yes, it's perfect. Oh, okay, okay. So maybe I just run down the video, a couple of videos, make sure the video works. So, so yeah, so the time wise, I think uh, so I think I got like more more almost more more like uh, 45 minutes to talk to make the presentation. W yeah, anything longer is that okay. How long is one hour is the firm cutoff? Hello? A picture? No, I think presentation wise, I just want to make sure the time wise I'm okay. Um I might run a little bit longer. I think usually use that forty-five minutes. Usually is is a is a time, uh, forty-five minutes, fifteen minutes. Uh, what's the um, is, is that is the firm limit for the no, time? No limit actually. You can extend. Oh, you can extend. Okay, so I make it feel right. better. Okay, okay. So I try to make it of definitely within one hour for sure. Okay, within okay. one hour. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. So, so I think maybe we can try the, uh, I try the slide side, try the video. So this is maybe I go through the slides really quickly. So I talk about fiber and then the, and, the, and then go to the equipment and talk about technology. And then I'll come to video. I think I'll just try to see, make sure the video works. That's it. Then, then I think we just wait. Yeah, okay. So this is a, the next one is a video. So I just want to make sure the video works. Okay. Uh, Okay, so it's not run. Oh, it's running. Okay, let me see.
Okay, so the video works. Okay, so I think this is a good. Yeah. Then I have, a, I think I have another video, final video to make sure everything works. Yeah, this is another video. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so 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 looks like uh, so I think looks like so we're okay. We're okay. Hey, by she, everything's okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. Yeah. So, so looks good. So, I think I will just go to the first uh, slides again. So, I will. So, I will leave it there. Okay. So, I'm I'm ready. Sure. How about my video? I think my uh, uh, just uh, I think myself. If everything's okay, just do you want to show my video as well? Um, show me. Yes. Make sure everything is. Uh... Yes, that would be great. Bash. Can you see me? No. Can you see me now? No, the video is still not there. Not yet. Uh, do I need to share my video? Or... Yes, I think so. Okay, maybe, I, maybe so I just it. asked you. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, okay. yes. It's, it's okay. Okay. So now it's great. Yes. Is, is it okay? I think like something like this, right? I think just, yes. 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 Is it okay? Or which one's better? I think this one. Uh, yeah, a little bit lower. A little lower? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. So I think if we want to turn off, that's okay. I think we can turn off. Yes, sir. Alex. Yeah. Uh, so Apeksha, so uh, Rizwan will be giving the first. Is there an introduction from somebody else before Rizwan? Like Alice introduction? No, sir, we'll okay. start four uh, with Rizwan. Okay, okay. Sir, actually, okay so what I checked, uh, Rizwan will be doing now. Yes, yes, I'll be doing the talk introduction. Okay. I know. Uh, last time you remember, somebody uh, in welcome for the webinar. Are we doing that or straight away this one does that? So I've prepared that also. Oh, great. So then Rizwan, you go ahead with the straight away on the webinar starting introduction and introducing okay. Baishi. Yes. Uh, then once the questionnaire uh, section starts, you come again online yes. and uh, select a, one or uh, like three questions from there yes. and then put it to Baishi. Sure. And finally, I'll give the vote. Thanks. And, yeah. uh, and Apeksha, are we like last time? Are we will we be noting down the questions and forwarding to Rizwan on the chat? Uh, Rizwan, sir, will shortlist from the chat. Yes, but uh, we are yes, recording yes. all the questions and uh, the contact details so that we can send them later in email. Yes, yes sir. Yeah, so that in, that email information will go on the chat, okay? okay. Yeah. So, so, okay, so, Maishi, so yeah. we are eager to listen to your talk. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So basically, yeah, so Rizwan will feed some questions, right? So I think you yes. will follow the questions. Yes. Feed yes. Some, uh, some questions. Okay, okay, okay. So we don't want yeah. you to go through the chat and answer them. So Rizwan is no, like no, questions and answers. I think that's, that's, that's great. That's why that's my life will be, be much easier. <laughs> okay. So, sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Sounds okay. good.
So I stop my video. I'll be online by she. Uh, so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think you can stop video if you want, I think. So if people log in, I think maybe you can start video later. My, my video as well, if you want. Yes, Vaishi. So we can start the video once the session starts. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can start. I, I can, right? I think it's... Uh... You, you can uh, stop the video. I, I can stop video. How would how would yes. I do that? I think. Uh, so in the bottom you have uh, controls. So think in the bottom. No, no. Should I stop it for you? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I want to know, I think, how to media, media control, why it doesn't show up. Oh, so there's one actually I saw it was. It's not too much. I don't know why, why what happened. So, the control panel does not pop up for whatever reason. I don't know why. So you can just hold it around it, it should pop up in the bottom. Yeah. Screen. I know, I know. Usually, usually have a control. I don't have this. Uh, this uh, might be you're in the full screen mode. Huh? Uh, might be you're in the full screen mode. So if you press escape, probably you will get the other icons. Wait, is the, uh, let me try to see. It's, oh, it's here. Yeah, it's here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's here. So I think this is. Uh, yeah, I can stop video really. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And Apeksha, can we have the title slide of the webinar? Can we do that. Uh, my slides. Uh, no, no. Uh, Apeksha has an advertisement for you on the webinar. Yeah. 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 Just show. Yeah. Just show that the uh, slides. I think she's okay. Yeah. Uh, might be by sharing. Oh yeah. Uh, no, I think I, I'm sharing. Oh no, no, it's not sharing. Yeah. So Apeksha can put her slide. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Okay. So I put them mute, okay.
Hello, Rizwan, sir. Yes, Abhiksha. I start my video as well. You want me to share my screen yes. at any time? Uh, no? Uh, not, not now, Vaish. Yeah, yeah, a little. Yeah, okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, hello and uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today. My name is Rizwan, and I'm working as a senior sales manager in Data Science, and I'll be a moderator for today. So our topic for today uh, will be the latest trend of specialty fiber processing technologies and applications in fiber lasers and biophotonic sensing. And this talk will be delivered by Dr. Baishiwan. So let's take a moment to introduce our guest speaker. Dr. Wang is a global business manager at Thor Labs Whiteran Division. He has been the director of technology and scientist with Whiteran LLC in New Jersey, USA. Prior to joining Whitran, he was a member of technical staff at Specialty Fiber Division of Luzon Technologies or Bell Labs Innovations. So he received his PhD from State University of New York on optomechanical engineering. Uh, he has 20 plus years of experience in fiber optics industry, focusing on specialty fibers, fiberglass processing, fiber lasers and amplifiers, fiber sensing, precision instrumentation, measurements, business management, and customer solutions. He has published uh, numerous papers in referred journals and conferences and provided invited presentations frequently in SPIE and OSC chapters and other technical conferences. So he's also a senior member of SPIE and a member of OSC Eastern chapters. So this talk will be for 50 minutes followed by a Q&A session of 10 minutes. And we encourage you to ask any questions you may have by sharing them in the chat box with your name, organization. We will try to answer most of your questions during the Q&A session after the talk, as time permits, while the remaining questions will be answered via email. And without any further delays, I invite Dr. Wong to start the talk. Over to you, Dr. Wong. Okay. So let me share my screen first. Okay, I will share my screen. I will share my screen. Okay. Yeah. Can you see? Yes, thank you. Okay. Okay. Okay, I think I'm all good, all right? Okay. Yeah, so, yes, yeah, thanks everyone for this really uh, kind introduction. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thanks for coming for this for the seminar. Yeah, first of all, really, I'd like to thank Lisa Science uh, for organizing this event uh, and all everybody uh, for attending this. Uh, my name is uh, Bai Shu Wang. So as you know, I'm Rizwan already introduced. I'm from uh, Bai Chuan. A division of the Saw Labs. Uh, I've been with the Vitran for over 15 years. Uh, uh, prior to uh, joining Vitran, um, I work for uh, Lucent Technologies and OFS. So my background is on the specialty fiber, uh, fiber processing and applications. So today's topic uh, is on the latest trend of uh, specialty fiber processing technologies and the applications in fiber lasers and photonics 
by photonic sensing. So a quick, quick outline. Uh, first of all, what I'll do, I will do a, a, a overview of special fibers and the fiber processing. Then I will talk about two latest fiber fusion technologies, filament fusion and the CO2 laser fiber fusion. Uh, then I will introduce how we use the technology to fabricate high performance fiber lasers and the fused fiber components. And finally, we provide some applications uh, in fiber lasers and the fiber photonic sensing. So before I do, I have a few slides really quickly talk about this, what is, who's Solab and who's Vitran. So right now, as you know, Vitran is part of Solab. And Solab was founded uh, in 1989 by Alex Cable uh, from, uh, from Bell Labs in Lucent Technologies. So currently Solab, we have, have has over 2,000 employees worldwide and have like 20,000, more than 20,000 products offered uh, to our customers. And as, as you can see that the uh, Solab basically, we have uh, its headquarters in uh, Newark, New Jersey, and it has offices uh, around the globe uh, in South America, in Europe, and in Asia. So about Vitran, Vitran was also founded, founded uh, in 1989 uh, from, uh, from uh, a, 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 a scientist from, uh, from Bell Lab. Um, the key focus of, so, of Vitran is really for fiber processing. So, so and Vitran was a uh, part of the NKT uh, since uh, 2010, NKT Photonics since 2009. And in uh, 2015, Vitran was acquired by Solab. So we have a, a office, a headquarter, Vitran headquarter in, in Morganville, New Jersey, which does the R&D manufacturing, sales, and customer service. And we also have office in Vitran Europe, Exeter, who does the Europe sales and the customer service. So now let's move on to the, uh, the, the today's talk, really. Uh, so first of all, really, I would talk about the really quickly special fiber and fiber processing. So, when you see the typically, uh, I think a lot of people feel with fiber, I think just from the ground up really. So fiber, uh, it's very simple architecture really. It's usually it's three layers uh, with uh, a different indexes and the dimensions. So you can see the picture on the right, this is like a schematic of fiber. So it has a core, uh, which really define the waveguide property. And then they have cladding it defend, defined the mechanical property design. So when the core coupled with the cladding really light propagate in the, inside the core uh, via total, total internal reflection. So, and then you have a final layer, a third layer, which is a coating, a protect layer. Um, so layer, uh, it normally the index of the protect layer is higher than the cladding glass. And the core is lower, uh, the, the, sorry, core is higher as well than the cladding. So light propagates inside the core. Uh, so the coating actually protect the glass. That's typical telecom type of fiber. And then you have another type of uh, coating layer is called low index, which is with the index, but Refract index lower than the glass cladding, basically. And also you have a, a polyimid coating with also high index uh, reflective coating uh, for high temperature applications. 
So this is basically a very quick, basically architecture of the of your fiber. And then optical property of the fiber. That's very. There are two things very important uh, for the fiber. One is the modes because light propagate along the fiber. So usually fiber support different type of modes. So the fundamental mode we call the LP01 mode, which is the left. And then the next high order mode is LP11 mode. Uh, so it's not a fundamental mode anymore. Basically we call the high order modes. So typically a fiber can support one mode or many modes. Another important parameter is called V parameter. So V parameter really defines number of modes supported by a fiber. If V number is less than 2.405 and the fiber, we call the fiber a single mode fiber. And the V number is defined by the equation on the right. Uh, basically it's based on the numerical amperature of the fiber, uh, the wavelengths of operation wavelengths and the core diameter of core radius of the fiber basically. So this is very a simple form to define a fiber property. So we fiber wise, there's so many fibers around the world really. So I think keep us busy as well. Um, so I, I basically categorize these into four different types based on different properties. So if you, if you actually uh, based on uh, refract index of the fiber coding, so basically we say, okay, we have a single clad, which is telecom fiber with the refract index of the coding material higher than the cladding of the glass. And also uh, we have double clad fiber uh, with the refract index lower than the cladding index. So that's one type. And that type based on the five modes. So usually we call the single modes uh, for the fiber, which support only one fundamental mode and also multi-modes and uh, for the fiber to support many, many modes, a lot of modes. Um, and also lately we have also called large area fiber, large mode area fiber or few mode fiber, uh, which is support a few mode. This type of fiber really to mitigate the non-linearity of the, of, of, of the fiber really. Um, and then based on geometry, um, we, we can have the polarization maintaining fiber, which has the stress member uh, inside the glass. And then we have photonic crystal fiber, uh, we also call it PCF fiber. It's a structured fiber, uh, basically based on uh, a different, different geometry, a different uh, fiber rod stepped together. Um, and also some of the fiber is not shape circular like octagon or D shape for special purposes really. And also finally, I think based on material, uh, typical fibers are made of silica fiber. Um, and then the, you also have like soft glass, uh, like a and forced to operate this uh, over uh, two micron uh, region, we say basically. And these are some pictures you can see. Um, so the top left is the single mole fiber. And the second one, you can see the LMA uh, core is bigger. And also the PM, you have a panda uh, stress members. Uh, and then you have multiple fiber um, and also another multiple fiber with different layers. The first multiple fiber is the two layers, which has the basically, typically is a cladding core, is a basically pure silica core and down doped with the flooring layer outside. So that's typical, the multiple fiber is consists of. And then the another multiple is triple clad. You can see the floor layers in the middle, and then the glass uh, outside for different purpose. And also you have a bow tie PM fiber. So different shape. You can see this is a there's a non-circular fiber as an octagon 
for the usually used for the act as the active fiber for for mostly for mold mix, mixing uh, basically pump mold mixing uh, in this type of fiber and also you have uh, PCF fiber uh, and uh, and uh, and photonic banking fiber uh, on the bottom right. So when you have fiber, okay, you need to process them basically. So the, the basic process step, basically you have like six steps what we have here. So the first step really, you have to strip the fiber to remove the coating, and then you need to clean the fiber. Uh, after this, you cleaving to make a flat surface and after this, you either splice or either tape, taper the fiber. Uh, after the fiber is processed or splice, you also need to pre protect the fiber. And then finally, basically you do testing. So these are basic sequence of the fiber process. So I, without getting into detail, I just highlight some of the best practice um, we will recommend actually, which is best practice for fiber processing is the really smooth thermal stripping, ultrasonic cleaning, and then tension scribed cleaving. And the splicing wire that's common, I think uh, the more advanced one is really filament fusion, the CO2, CO2 laser fusion, which, which I will talk about a little bit later. And then recording, and then the uh, basically the testing. So some of the equipment uh, can be used uh, for doing these type of process. So one first one is really strip clean. Uh, so thermal stripping and ultrasonic cleaning. Uh, that's the first one, it's FPS 301. And then when you do cleaving, uh, we have large diameter cleaver LC41 uh, or A with, for, with angle cleaving for cleave fiber all the way up to 1.25 millimeters. And for splicing, we have for, de depends what type of fiber you want to process. Uh, we have uh, FF2000 for processing small diameter fiber up to 200 microns. Uh, so this is for both the PM, non-PM. And then you have LFS 4100 and the GPX 3400 then can process fiber for over one millimeters. And for fiber recording, this is a typical example. We have PTR43B uh, to process, to recode the fiber, either high index coding or low index coding. And also you can do both basically uh, by switching uh, recall material. For testing, you have uh, rotary testing, PTR302, uh, to pull test uh, the strength of your splice or the fiber itself. And also, we also have uh, inspection equipment. So we have CC6000 for inspection of the fiber connectors, the end phase of fibers, uh, and also GO16 for inspect multi multi fibers, so multi multiple fibers in one connectors, uh, so up to um, uh, 30 some fibers array basically. So now uh, I'm gonna talk about really the, the, the latest fusion technology, uh, filament and CO2 fusion. So as we all know, I think fusion, we have different type of method. Uh, arc, uh, it's very popular, people use that a lot. And also you have flame and then the filament fusion CO2. Um, so, Regardless of what type of the, the fusion method you're using, um, in order to achieve high performance, uh, you really want to have a, first of all, uniform heating profile. Uh, so usually circular heating is a preferred, uh, which you give you the uniform heating. Uh, and then different temperature control to, for different type of fibers or different process you want to do. When you do splicing, typically temperature is like 2000 degrees C. And then for tapering, typical temperature is a little bit lower around the 16,000 degrees C. 
Uh, and also when you process different type of fibers like non-silica soft glass fiber, uh, you really need a much lower temperature. So ideally you really want the heat source with a, with a wide temperature control range really. Uh, and depends on tapering or splicing, you also want the width control as well, which is preferred tapering. When you do tapering, tapering width need to be a little bit wider. Uh, when you're splicing and with need to be, um, if you want to do that for the pr production, it need to be consistent and also repeatable, really. Yeah. So to achieve that, um, the latest trend really is really with the fusion and the CO2. That's the next step, basically. Um, Arc is more popular, I think, the telecom application for small fibers, uh, ease of use. But the, when you actually go with the larger diamond fiber for the specialty fiber processing, the graphite filament and the CO2 give you some advantages, which I'm going to talk about next. So the filament fusion um, is based on the resistant heater. It's like light bulb, basically. Um, so the uh, the heating method is really via radiation. So you have a light bulb, it's like a sunlight basically penetrate the light or heat basically the energy into the glass really. So it's like broadband light source or it's radiation. Uh, it's uh, uh, and the filament is really a temperature up to a, a 3000 degrees C. It's like light bulb, same thing. So you can turn the light bulb basically the, the dimmer and the brighter, uh, it, it, it's, it work exactly the same thing. And the shape of this filament is a circular or omega shape, which provide uniform heating profile. And, and also you have the different size or width, uh, which can be used for different applications. The control of this type of filament is really with the DC control. Um, so it's very consistent and repeatable. Uh, because the accuracy or consistency is basically is uh, based on the DC voltage control accuracy or consistency. And this is a, like basically a very mature technology. Um, as, as, as people are familiar with fiber, you know, the graphite heater has been widely used in the draw tower. So this is like a mini miniature draw tower. Uh, so it's a very mature technology. Um, so uh, before we actually get into the uh, real splicing, uh, I would say one few words about the cleaving as well. Um, so before you make any kind of splice, really, um, the, the cleaving is very important. Cleaving is very important. So you really want to have a, a flat clean surface and a low cleave angle, really. So you, as you can see, this is a, a cleave surface on the right, you can see the surface, it's real flat. Uh, so there's no heckle, or any kind of a defect uh, present in the, on that surface. And the cleave angle, you can see the statistic of a cleave angle chart, the average for that, uh, for, for this example is, uh, uh, is less than 0.2 degrees for a few thousand of cleaves. So you really want to have a very nice move on to your splice. Otherwise, regardless of what type of a, a fusion method you're using, if the clear angle is no good, you can, you can never make a good splice, really. So one equipment, actually, I think, can be used for the splicing and tapering. Uh, it's really GPX 3400. I think that's actually what we offer based on the filament technology. Uh, so this actually is a splicing a tapering machine uh, via a filament heating method. Uh, so this is uh, can be used for any type of fiber, literally uh, single mole, multi mole, PM, uh, crystal fiber, soft glass fiber, because uh, it can operate at like 300 degrees C, uh, large diameter uh, as well, uh, 1.25 uh, for 3400. Uh, so this equipment basically. Uh, has a, a couple of other important features, uh, basically very precision mechanical control feature, um, which allow you to do the X, Y movement, um, and also have a beauty microscopic imaging system, 
which you can view the fiber side view and also the end view. Um, so I have some um, images later. Uh, and the, so the, all the alignment and the splicing, tapering and the fiber process can be done really automatically, automatically. And this platform has been used and uh, can be used for a variety of uh, basically fabrication of uh, uh, a different kind of a fiber device and the fuse fiber components uh, really, yeah. And also to have upgrade, there's an additional feature um, can be offered with this type of uh, equipment uh, for like 3600 for larger diameter uh, fiber processing and also inline cleaver um, and the hot view image can be offered uh, with this uh, system as an upgrade, basically. So, so here are some image, splice image example, as you can see. Uh, first one is the 400 micron fiber, uh, uh, just passive to passive. So it's a GDF, uh, it's basically 2400 to 2400 splice. After splice, the, you can see the, basically there's a, there's a, basically everything become a very uniform and you don't see any kind of line in the middle, which means uh, the, the splice joint is perfectly formed basically. Uh, so that's one example. Uh, and also you have the active to passive fiber, uh, which is uh, left bottom. Uh, and also there's a, uh, basically the photosensitive fiber to the passive fiber, uh, which is on the uh, bottom right. Uh, but after this splice, you can see the, the core is perfect line. You have a very good uh, microscopic uh, imaging system. You can see this and also precision mechanical alignment to align this uh, uh, coupled with uniform heating uh, as I talk about, which is important for, uh, for make uh, basically a perfect splice. You can also make this type of splice like PC5, PCF uh, to silica fiber. Uh, this actually requires lower temperature heating. Uh, again, I think this type of a splice prof file can be offered uh, by us. You can do this, depends on the fiber with the FA2000 and also the GPX uh, glass processor. Another example is the bank F fiber. So bank air fiber, there's a couple of things I think it's important. Uh, one is the cleaving. Um, so I think you need to make sure you make a nice cleave uh, without any kind of heckle or any kind of features, which is shown on the left. So in this type of cleaving, typically we, cleave, we control the tension uh, to maintain a very low tension cleave. So to mitigate any kind of uh, basic heckle formation really in the, this type of fiber surface. And then in the splicing, we also have a special technique to splice with the low temperature. And also we can use like offset basic splicing for doing this. And this is an example of 250 micron photonic bank, bank air fiber are spliced to a solid um, silica fiber. Uh, and also the multi-core multi fiber uh, can be processed as well. So you have a variety of multi-core fiber uh, we want to have here. For multi-core fiber, uh, which you can tell, I think alignment is critical. Um, so the, what we do uh, is really align through the end view. So basically we look at the fiber from the end. Uh, you can see this is a four core, um, multiple fiber and the seven core and then this five cores and even nine cores. So you basically rotate the, the fiber to its intended orientation and then you splice afterwards, after alignment basically. So, so I just show you some examples uh, on the splicing end. Next, I'm going to talk about fiber tapering. Um, so, fiber tapering is a very important process for uh, fabricate a fuse fiber component. So, it's like a fiber drawing, uh, 
uh, the principle of the fiber taper is very simple, basically. So we basically pull, have two stages. Um, uh, basically one stage pulling the fiber, another stage push the fiber. The velocity of these two stages are different. So the taper ratio is de determined by the differential velocity of these two stages. And in this case, of course, the heater uh, remains stationary. Um, so you can see there we have V in and V out uh, here. Uh, so fiber tapering, uh, for typically the volume of the material is conserved. So there's no, no material lost really, if, unless you really burn the fiber really. Uh, so the taper ratio you can see based on, the, you can do very simple calculation is a square root of the velocity difference. That's the table ratio defined as the diameter ratio of the diameter of the input fiber and output fiber, uh, basically. Yeah. So the poor velocity and the temperature control is very important uh, for this type of tapering process. And typically, the tapering tension need to be monitored, uh, which give you feedback to see how well you control the temperature. Typically, the taper tension is high, which we call uh, basically cold uh, tapering. Uh, if, if it's a low taper tension, low it's hot really, but it gives you a different feature of, uh, of a tapering property, yeah. But in any case, um, for normal taper, the taper ratio is only determined by the velocity of the two stages really. So this, these are a, a couple of uh, uh, examples of, uh, of, of, of the tapering using uh, GPX 3400. One is uh, basically the PCF fiber tapering. So you can see the, there's no cold collapse in this tapering process. So the, the, we control the temperature pretty well. And then you get a nice profile uh, of the tapering and also the, the, the structure basically remain the same basically. So this is the uh, PCF fiber tapering. Uh, and, and another one is the, we taper fiber from 1.5 to a micro level taper. So uh, there's a bit, we use basic GPX coupled with a, a, a special software, a, a additional software for doing this uh, for better control. Uh, so typically we can taper that down to uh, sub microns. As you can see, the right bottom image is the 700 some nanometers uh, measured by the SEM. Uh, so, so the key requirement for this type of tapering is really low loss or adiabatic. Basically, we just, the, the fiber tapering need to be adiabatic basically. So it's basically, you basically what, what happened in this type of tapering, you maintain the mode basically propagate mode, basically the uh, integrity uh, by, by uh, introduce really uniform uh, and the adiabatic uh, fiber tapering, basically. So another uh, fusion technique, which you lately introduced is really CO2 fusion. So CO2 fusion to me is very different technologies. So as I mentioned, the filament and arc uses these type of things. Usually a filament actually, uh, particularly really heat fiber with, with, through radiation. Um, so basically uh, it's like a, 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 basically a heater, it's like an oven basically. Um, but the CO2 uh, heat the fiber differently basically. So CO2 is a laser, you know, so it's, a, it's 10 micron basically 10.6 usually uh, laser. Uh, so when the CO2 laser um, basically it is it basically heat, heat the fiber and the heat gets absorbed by the surface of the fiber. So I will call it CO2 heating. Typically it's a surface heat. It's a surface heat um, because it does not actually penetrate into the fiber right away. It can't because it simply absorbed by the, by the fiber. And then the heat actually is conducted 
from the surface to other area. So it actually always involved two steps, actually. That's the, 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 the nature of the CO2 heating. Uh, so the good thing of the CO2 heating is also basically, a, it's a localized heating, basically. So you can basically inject the, lading, the laser anywhere you want, literally. Um, so on the surface, on the side, uh, with different area by control the beam, uh, beam spot size. Uh, so that's the beauty of the CO2, which is uh, different from the filament heating. Um, so in our uh, CO2 laser fusion technology, we introduce a ring shape laser, uh, which uh, enables really uniform uh, heating. And the temperature of course can be controlled uh, using this type of CO2 laser. Um, in this uh, CO2 system, uh, we also introduce uh, two different options of bin delivery. Uh, so one is the vertical de bin delivery, which, which is vertical really 90 degrees to the fiber, and also the oblique delivery of the beam. Uh, it's like 10 degrees for, especially for end cap uh, splicing. The advantage of that, I will talk a little bit later really. Uh, so it also enables us really to splice uh, large diameter uh, fiber. Um, so the CO2 laser really is a complementary to the other fusion technology, filament fusion technology, especially for the end cap fiber splicing uh, and also large diameter fiber splicing, uh, some of which cannot be done really within using other uh, like filament uh, technology really. So here, this is schematic of a ring shape uh, a CO2 laser used. Uh, so basically CO2 laser, of course, always uh, come with a Gaussian beam. And then we use optical beam conversion to convert that to a ring shape beam. And then the beam, of course, is delivered to the fiber uh, vertically or with the oblique angle. So this is uh, basically uh, uh, equipment um, we introduced the GPX uh, 4000 LZ. Uh, this system is based on GPX 3400 glass process platform. Uh, we simply add the add the CO2 laser into that system. So the system offers dual heaters. It has built-in filament and also have the CO2 options option. So these two modes can be switched yeah, easily, basically. So total, we have three modes. We have, we have, we have filament modes, uh, and then we have the laser mode uh, in the vertical beam delivery and the oblique beam delivery for end cap splicing. So the rest pretty much the same is the microscopic imaging system and the precision mechanical system for MVU. Uh, so everything is the same as the GPX 3400. Uh, so this is really, I think the best platform available uh, or most powerful platform available for fiber processing. You literally can do anything you want actually. Uh, so, uh, and, uh, and also any kind of file you want that thing we can offer uh, basically uh, based on your needs basically. So here are uh, a couple of uh, uh, splice images using CO2. One's uh, 2400 passive fiber spliced to active fiber. Again, after splice, it's almost like, like one fiber, basically. Uh, you don't look at the difference, basically. So, and also one millimeter to one millimeter. And this type of splice, I don't think you can achieve with other alternative uh, heat source. Uh, so graphite, I don't think. Uh, have enough power to make that a splice. So, so that's uh, the beauty of a, a CO2 laser. So the another advantage, as I mentioned earlier, uh, is the for the end cap splicing. So end cap splicing uses CO2 uh, with oblique uh, beam incident, incident beam has unique advantages, uh, which cannot be offered with, by the other, other method, basically. So the the, the ultimate advantage basically is that it actually uh, 
allow you to splice the fiber to end cap with large aspect ratio, basically. So with very small fiber to large end cap can be spliced, really, using this type of technique. So I will tell you why that can be spliced, okay? So the key for this technique is that when you heat the fiber and the end cap, you heat the end cap first without heating the fiber. So if you use other source like a filament or other technique, inevitably you heat both the end cap and the fiber because the heating is not localized. It's not localized. So as a result, if a fiber and the end cap has very large end aspect ratio and the fiber melt first before the end cap. However, using CO2 heating, uh, which we use the indirect fusion method, I will call it. Uh, so it will actually heat the end cap first without heating the fiber. And then the heat actually is actually transferred or conduct from the end cap to the fiber to complete the fusion. So this is a, a video I, which, I, which I want to show you, okay? So I will show you the video which you, which you can see what I'm talking about here, basically. Okay, so I'll run the video. Um, I'm gonna skip basically the uh, alignment part. So this is actually, uh, yeah, so this is, uh, this is doing the alignment. Okay, so we do finish up the alignment. So in this case, you can see, I think we can see the, uh, the right end cap, the big one gonna light up first. I'm gonna pause a little bit. I'm gonna pause here, okay? So you can see in this case, the heat is absorbed by the big fiber. So you can see a white line form in that case. However, the left fiber is really cold. That's very important, okay? That's important. So as we continue, as we continue, the right fiber becomes hotter, hotter, hotter. And then the fiber itself is in contact with the big fiber or big end cap. And you can see then there's another line formed in the fiber surface itself. So you can see actually the heat that is a conduct from the big fiber to the small fiber. This is a very important step, really. So we don't heat the fiber really directly. So we can, as we continue, you can see the, you have nice joint formed at the big fiber and the small fiber interface, basically. So you have two line form, you have a big, you get a big white line in the end cap fiber, and then another line formed in the small fiber. Okay. So as we continue, so it's then the complete the, the the splice. You can see, then you can see you can you form a very nice joint at the splice interface. So this is really a big advantage of this type of a splicing technique using CO2 fusion which cannot be accomplished with another different technology. So again, so this is really CO2 for localized heating. And then you use a bleak beam really shoot at the big end cap and then heat up and then direct fusion. So we have done really very up to maybe several millimeters uh, with a very small fiber, even like 250 fibers can be spliced very easily. So by doing this, there's actually um, a couple of uh, advantages. Um, one is uh, the, the strength is very, very strong. You, you're not, you, you never be the break uh, because the, the fusion is really surface fusion. So you have, you almost like uh, basically hit a, a cold rod to a hot puddle basically, just stick in and then you form a nice joint. And then for the fiber laser, because of surface fusion and the, the beam, the, the beam property can be reserved actually. Um, so this preserve basically, um, then you have, you can maintain the beam property using this type of te technology.
Okay, so these are uh, another a couple of uh, examples of fiber splice. One twenty five uh, splice to one point two five millimeters. It doesn't matter, as I said, you can two millimeters, okay, we can splice really, because uh, the, uh, the the fiber actually uh, it, it, it does not get heated actually to start with, as I said. Um, and then your 400 to 1.25, uh, these are a couple of examples. And then uh, uh, another real example, so we have 400 to splice to two millimeter end cap, a small end cap. I think it's this one's probably like three millimeters thickness end cap. And then eight millimeter type of uh, basic cubic type of uh, end cap can be spliced as well. You can see this in this case, there's a far few basically uh, measurement made uh, for this device fabricated. Uh, you can see the, the beam, the uniform beam uh, is, can be achieved really. As I said, I think the strength is very, very high strength really. It's, uh, it's you never be able to break this type of device really, yeah. Okay, so this basically uh, basically complete the uh, the the, uh, the the portion of uh, the splicing and tapering uh, end. Next one, what I'm going to talk about really uh, to fabricate some kind of fiber devices and fuse fiber components with uh, some examples. So. As we work on fiber laser, okay, so this is very uh, simple schematic of uh, a CW, basically single cavity uh, fiber laser. Uh, so you have an active fiber in the middle, uh, and then you have a pair of gratings, HR and the OC, uh, and then you have combiner to deliver pump beam to the fiber, uh, and then you have output with the end cap, uh, and then uh, end cap and then uh, possibly being combining at the output end. So in order to make this, you need really a splicing of course, with, which we already discussed. And then you have uh, need some kind of other, uh, basically uh, fused fiber components or the special process of these fibers basically. Uh, of course, combiner is one. Uh, and then the splicing and Mofi adapting uh, is, uh, is one with different fibers, with different Mofi diameter. Uh, you need to do low loss, you need to splice them with very low loss. And fibers tend to have a different most Mofi diameter. Um, so in order to do that, you need to basically find a special technique to, uh, to make sure uh, to make sure the Mofi of these two fiber can be matched really. And the output uh, usually in, in order to uh, prevent the surface damage, you always have an end cap, uh, which is uh, bottom right uh, and output combiners. So I'm go through, we're gonna go through this one by one basically. So these are basically another example uh, basically for the different type of splicings, fiber with different size uh, and the different shape uh, and the different type basically. So you have LME fiber, 400 micron, 400 to 250 and 400 to 125 and the D-shape uh, fiber uh, splice. And this is again, this is a different uh, LMA PCF fiber. Uh, so this is a uh, NKT uh, basically 40 to 100. Uh, PZ active fiber uh, supplies to uh, another solid fiber. This is actually commonly used for the ultra fast fiber lasers. Uh, and then uh, it says a couple of images actually from uh, NKT basically the M face and also the, the, the beam shape of from this type of fiber. So one important aspect as I mentioned is really um, we have so many fibers and the fiber have different op optical uh, properties. Um, so what if you have fiber, one is uh, uh, more field is much smaller, another much bigger, and then to splice them together uh, with a low loss. Um, so, so this is an example of, uh, of fiber, uh, two different fibers. Uh, on the top, top left, you can see uh, from the core, if you focus on the core, fiber core, uh, if you look at the fiber core, so yeah, so look at the fiber core. Here is uh, 
6.5 microns, you can see six yeah, smaller five uh, mole field. And this one is bigger, it's like 12, 12 micron mole field. Uh, so when you splice them, uh, these fiber basically, if you splice them, the uh, because the mole field mismatch and the loss is pretty high really. Yeah? So, so, the, so in our case, um, we'll be able to use one technique called thermally expanded core uh, technique. So in this method, basically, we actually continuously heat the fiber uh, using what we call fiber polish. We scan the heat back and forth across that splice joint. Um, and then by doing this, the dopen in the fiber core can be diffused or expanded, basically. So the typically the dopen in this type of fiber is really germanium. So, so the good news is actually you typically the, the smaller mofield diamond fiber diffuses a little faster. And then the other one, a larger one, usually with the less dopen diffuse a little bit slower. Um, so as a result, you'll be able to achieve a good mofield matching. So the Bottom left is basically after splice. You can see after splice, the literally you don't see. It. If you look at a core, it's pretty uniform, almost like one fiber. You can see focus. You see a little bit core based on the contrast of the image, basically. But the uh, the 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 the, the, the mofio is a very good match. So the right one is basically a couple of uh, measurement result. Measurement result. So this is actually. Uh, Top right is the actual loss measurement. So after direct splice, we got 0.8 dB uh, of this splice, basically, because the mofio of this one is uh, is a two time difference, really. So, uh, so now we introduce the fire polish. So each dot is one fire polish. So I just want to illustrate the process. So make it very slow, gradual. So. After one polish, the doping diffuse a little bit. So you can see the loss decrease gradually. Eventually, uh, the loss become really 0 0.03 dB for these two fibers, really, yeah. Uh, so, and they diffuse more and loss become higher, as you can see, because, because uh, the other fiber uh, become reverse. I think the, the smaller fiber, core fiber become, the mofia smaller core fiber become uh, much bigger. Uh, so this is uh, uh, what, what happened really in this case. And also you can do, we did a, a mofio, far few scan measurement. So what we did after um, mofio diffusion, we actually cut the fiber, cleave it, and then you do a far few scan. You can see the virgin fiber, the mofio is 6.5. And then we will expand the mofio to 17.5 micron. So almost uh, threefold basically of uh, the, uh, the mofio change uh, in this case. Yeah, so this is really a powerful uh, process which we can use for the uh, mofio matching really. It's called the TAC basically, thermally expanded core method. So to achieve this actually, uh, there are fewer requirements actually um, to achieve this. So I just explained the, the approach um, so the requirement basically, of course, the first one is the mofio matching, as we mentioned. So after expansion, maybe the mofio become 15 or 60 microns at the splice joint. Uh, on, on top of that, actually, another important aspect is that during that the expansion process, the mofio basically need to be remain circular, which is very important, okay? So if so, that's why the uniformity of the heating is very important. If you have differential heating, the mole field expansion is not done uniformly. Uh, the mole field, if uh, if you like arc or something like this, the the, the temperature is, is uh, hotter in one direction in the cooling direct direction, and the beam tends to become oval, which is not something you want. Uh, so that's actually another importance. So the the heating need to be uniform really uh, and also I think the we need to maintain a 
nice long papers, which I, 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 I basically have this here. So you need to maintain this type of taper. Uh, it's nice long, that's why we use fine polish. Otherwise, during that process, the, the, the beam uh, basically will not uh, propagate uh, the adiabatic basically. Uh, so uh, if otherwise you excite, if the, if, if the lens is too short, uh, you basically excite the high order modes. Um, so which, which, which you incur higher loss basically. So these are very important aspect really uh, for the, for the uh, for for achieving this type of loss, yeah. So another approach uh, for doing this uh, mo field adapting is really really keep tapering. So the one actually for tech, it, it, you can typically typically use that uh, when the cladding diameter of two fiber are the same. So like one twenty five to fifty, you can use tech, use uh, which is very robust. Uh, but when the cladding diameter of two fiber differences, one is 125, another is uh, 250, and then it's better, always better to taper uh, the bigger fiber to a smaller size to match the fiber to be spliced, the smaller fiber to be spliced. Um, so when you do the fiber taper, the- Dr. Wang, we have another 15 minutes to- Okay, thank, thank you, thank you, yeah, yeah. So when you do the fiber tapering, basically the, the, the good news is the, the mold field got changed. So you can see NA remain the same and then the, the, the mold, the, the core diameter reduce and then um, you have the mold field change. So by doing this, you'll be able to, uh, to, to adapt to the for mold field adapting really. So this example, okay, so the 250, basically 20 to 50 microfiber to 10 microfiber. So this involved two steps. We do the fiber tapering and then we do tech. Uh, so this one, and then the loss become really less than can be, you can achieve the loss to less than 0.1 dB basically from original to 4 dB. Yeah, so the combiner, there's a few methods making combiners. Uh, so IPG, really side pump, and then the Lucent, uh, which I was in, uh, basically the bundle twist. And Vitran, we use computer tube uh, to make this type of combiner, basically. So the advantage of the, uh, uh, the uh, computer tube is really for two, uh, twofold, basically. One is the fiber remains straight during the process to achieve low loss, and the packaging may become much uh, simpler because the computer tube uh, is really can be used as a, like a, a packaging material. So it's almost like a big fiber which you can uh, you can place in the in your housing or your or package. So this is a basic seven to one combiners, nineteen platform basically and also you can have a, a, a basically a, a basically signal fiber in the middle pm or non-pm fiber in the middle uh, to make six plus one to one uh, combiner and this is a, just a different combiners or with the different fusions method so uh, with the different heating basically if it's a cold uh, basically you can see the uh, uh, top left uh, if you make it hotter, and basically, it's basically everything to form uh, as, a, as, a, as, as a circular shape, basically. And, and this type of a, a bundle can be made of photon lantern as well. So this example of photon lantern, the three fibers, basically you all tape all the way to a different size. In this case, the, the fiber core has different uh, optical characteristics. So which allow you to, to have different uh, mole field coupling uh, structure, basically. So this is really for the space division multiplexing or photonic lantern uh, fabrication. And also the side pump I just said, really, you can fuse two sides together. And the, in the five laser, of course, end cap, uh, this is another example of end cap splice uh, with the CO2. 
And this example of two fibers uh, splice to a big fiber, uh, two 400 micron fiber splice to one millimeter fiber. So next, I think uh, quickly, I have 10 minutes probably, I think go, quickly go over some of the application examples uh, using basically, uh, which uses uh, basically these type of uh, components. So this is the one example is the CW uh, mobile fiber laser. So in this case, actually you can see the splice is important, which enables kilowatts uh, fiber laser. Uh, so when you have uh, this type of a fiber module, basically a fiber laser module, you can always combine it really to achieve high power, uh, basically multiple fiber laser, basically. So in this case, the 600, seven 600 watts of fiber lasers is combined with a seven to one uh, fiber combiner, uh, fiber combiner. So uh, to achieve 600, six kilowatts, basic laser output. So one actually uh, important aspect really of uh, the, the power scaling is really to scale up the brightness. When you do the regular, uh, basically the combining of, of the multiple combining, basically being combining, you don't basically enhance the brightness. You only increase the power, the brightness remain the same or usually typically less after being combined. Uh, the, one to scale up the, the brightness of the power. So we really through a coherent beam combined. So this is one example of work of work we've done actually to scale up power really. So this is through a coupler. We achieve actually um, basically over hundred uh, watts of uh, output of through two couplers, uh, basically a couple approach. Um, and then we also basically, uh, basically uh, uh, do this with uh, uh, six, basically uh, two stages, a couple of uh, almost uh, 200 uh, watts, uh, which is uh, published in the other uh, publication, basically. So, so in all these, basically the, the fused fiber components is very important. Um, and these are another couple of examples of fiber laser. Uh, basically one is the um, soft glass. So this is a CW uh, basic laser um, at uh, 2.4, um, 2.4, yeah, sorry, yeah. So it's a 2.8 uh, micron um, using um, urban zebra uh, active fibers. Uh, so the uh, the splicing is uh, done actually. Um, basically, you, at the low temperature, you can see this uh, the soft glass fiber splicing. Um, another example is uh, also soft glass. This is ultra fast. Um, basically, the fiber uh, splice. Uh, really is also done with, at a low temperature. So these are basically a couple of examples really for the uh, mid IR uh, basically laser. So in this type of a fiber laser, you always uh, basically need to splice the uh, similar soft glass fiber together. And also sometimes silica fiber uh, splice to the soft glass fiber splice. So we also develop basically special technique uh, for, for doing this actually. Um, uh, basically, to, so you can make all fiber um, laser basically uh, emitting at the wavelengths uh, over two microns, basically. Finally, um, so I have a few words in the photonic, uh, uh, basically biphotonic sensing. So this is actually emerging basically uh, application, uh, which is important. Uh, 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 basically for the uh, next uh, next generation of uh, basically uh, fiber-based uh, fiber application, really. Uh, so the probe, really, there's two types of probe actually can be used in this type of area. So one is like a basic fiber-based one, one fiber probe, uh, another like a 2D probe, uh, really for the, mostly for the imaging of for the illumination or imaging um, with this type of probe. So, uh, one example is really the OCT, uh, OCT imaging, uh, and this is really the, the face measurement 
um, basically, which can be done in either the spatial domain or in the frequency domain uh, using a low coherent light source or broadband source or swept laser. Uh, so in this case, where the probe is injected inside the body, um, and then the probe is rotate is rotated basically 360 degrees, and also is pulled back simultaneously during that process in order to achieve the or to get 3D face information. So, so in this type of application, the probe fabrication is very important. So what we do basically we fabricate probe um, basically for imaging similar to the objective lens used uh, in regular imaging. So we basically make a fiber-based probe uh, or fiber-based microscope, uh, we will call it, or fiber-based fiber uh, objective. Uh, so you can use a different section of uh, fiber, single mole fiber, and then you have grid index fiber as a focusing objective, uh, focusing element, and then use a, a spacer, which is a coilless fiber, and also a prism to deflect the beam. So without getting into detail, so the key aspect, important aspect of this type of element is basically the lens control. As you can see, the, the fiber lens actually, uh, without with control different lens, you can basically control the beam propagation of optical cap characteristics of this type of device. And also the splice quality, uh, basically the uniformity of the splice to achieve basically uniform the beam delivery similar to the end cap splicing uh, because you don't want the beam shape to be distorted during the splice. Another important aspect is very high strength of this type of splice. Uh, for a lot of ap medical application failure or break, it is, it is really catastrophic, uh, which you really don't want, yeah. So, so this is really a few devices that can be fabricated with this probe, okay. So one is a, a coherent probe, which is, uh, uh, consists of a, a section of a fiber, basically, uh, which make uh, this, uh, and also protected with a, a computer tube outside, uh, really, for the, this type of application. So lastly, what I would do, I want to show you a video, basically, uh, I just want to show you a, 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 a video uh, for this type of probe, okay. So in this case, actually, you see this type of a probe fabrication can be very straightforward. First, first of all, you simply load the fiber in there So you load the fiber, and this the fiber is already loaded. And then eventually, basically, you heat the fiber, you form a, a, a nice probe, basically. So you can see the now the heat actually will be introduced. So you can see the heat introduced, fibers are pulling, and then you can see the, the forming of the, the this type of a probe, basically. So this is a probe is already formed. You can see this is the the probe is formed, okay. And then lastly, basically, you can also basically make a measurement of this is the actual probe, and you can make a measurement of this this probe to get the the, the geometry of this probe, basically. Yeah, so this gives you, I think, around the 25 micron radius of this probe. Okay, so, so I think, I guess, I think uh, with the limited time, I think it give you some, uh, without getting much of a detail, really, I think uh, give some highlights of the, some of the capability of some of the work can be done really here. So I think I will, I talked about the fiber processing. Um, so you, as you know, the fiber process is really important for producing fiber-based components and systems 
both in R&D and the manufacturing. And the film fusion and CO2 fusion really provide a robust and versatile solution for this type of process, fiber splicing, tapering, and glass processing. Uh, and the various technique and the fiber can be used to produce uh, fiber devices, components, uh, really, in a nutshell, really, the low loss and the high strength. Uh, and also, the, the is, is very important for fiber device and the for both the mobile adapting and also fiber combiners. Um, and, and, then, then, and also, we show the latest trend of the fiber fusion techniques in various applications, right? in, in fiber laser, uh, in, in, in medical uh, probe, basically, application, really. Uh, so we also give quite some good, quite some examples uh, without some details. So, yeah, so uh, really, so thank you very much uh, for you, all your attention. Uh, really, uh, uh, the, with the, I think, I know the time is very limited here. Um, so I, I think just a few words, really, the lot of work actually for fiber processing, really fiber processing requires really this interdisciplinary work and also requires uh, basically collaboration within us and, and the, our customers. And, and, and most of the application actually, believe it or not, are really inspired by our customers. So uh, I think we really look forward to more collaboration with, uh, with you um, to maybe to further advance our technologies and also look forward to the opportunity of, of working together um, in the future, really. Thanks again. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Wang, for this uh, wonderful, informative, and interesting talk. Uh, so we do have some questions in the chat box. And uh, due to the time constraints, uh, I will choose a, a couple of questions which need at least a amount of time to be answered. So, so the first question is from Dr. Bien uh, uh, so he says the cleave angles becomes very important in splicing, and there is a large variation in cleave angles in practice. How can one maintain minimum cleave angle? Yeah. So, so this actually, I think, uh, I think of course, I think you need to introduce basically the the make make sure your your the, the cleaver you're using is in pretty good shape because if you the cleaver is not big shape, I think. You cannot do a, a, a good uh, cleave angle for sure, really, right? So that's actually a very important aspect, uh, really. So try to maintain the cleave, depends on your application, really. If you large diameter fiber, you really need a low cleave angle, try to maintain 0.5 degrees. Telecom usually is more given, maybe you can one degrees is okay. Uh, so not only the cleave angle, as mentioned, the cleave surface, is a lot of things. So one example I give you really, a lot of people say, oh, I have a bubble. And then you go, oh, that my splice is no good. No, when you have a bubble, it's not because of your splice, it's because of your cleaving, okay? Your cleaving is not good. Uh, it's because that's the really the root cause of a bubble forming, really typical bubble forming in your splice. So I think a cleaving is in, very important, really, I think. Also, there's some special technique, which I didn't talk about, uh, really later for the special fiber you have uh, you need a if you have if you have equipment you need a special technique for especially for photonic crystal fiber or or basically the structure fiber um, so if you have a, if you need a more help you can send us email uh, maybe we can talk more really uh, uh, down the road yeah later yeah next question is from Kanna. Uh, so he's asking with indirect fusion is it possible to efficiently splice two different materials of fiber together, say charcoalite and silica? Yes, I think that's a very good question. So that's actually that's exactly the 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 technique is for really. So um, so in that case, when we actually splice the uh, end cap, um, so that's actually exactly what happened because uh, the in that case the the temperature difference price splice between the end cap and the fiber, the fiber is very, very large. One is like room temperature almost. Um, so that actually applied to the different material as well. So what you can do is that you can heat up the, the, the germanium, whatever, or the, the silica fiber first, 
And then eventually you can approach the other fiber material with the Chagaldian eye, whatever, the different fiber really to really to touch the fiber uh, which is uh, heated by the CO2. So, so this actually can be, uh, can be, can be used really, I think, yeah, for different type of uh, material as well. Yes, very good question, yes. So for the last question, so it's from Jabal. So he's asking, regarding fiber ter termination with FC, PC, SMA, or other type of connectors, do you provide any special termination kits or for fabricated bias specialty fibers? Which are not mechanically strong as a standard silica fiber. Yeah. So or this any is... special okay. or any special recipe to be followed during termination of specialty fibers. Yeah. So termination, what we do, we always fuse the fiber to do to do the termination to termination. Yeah. So that's our specialty. So we can fuse any kind of end cap here. So like 125, we can fuse to like one millimeter end caps or even whatever size or length you want. And then after this, you can package. So packaging is not our specialty. I think Solab does provide some packaging kit uh, for common uh, special fiber, but our specialty is really to allow you to fuse different type of end caps. So like, uh, as I said, 1.2, 1 uh, 125 to any kind of size, one millimeter or even different size or different lengths. A different type or even uh, so so that's actually our specialty really so which you can facilitate the packaging um, later basically yeah so we can definitely work with you yeah to help you to for your application yeah so we can discuss more maybe send us your little bit detail uh, we can help you to to to, to make make everything work yeah Answering those questions. So the rest of the question, we will send out answer at the end. Really sorry about this. So I hand over uh, further to Mr. Jackish. Thank you. Very much. Uh, okay. So thank you, everybody. Yeah. 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 So uh, Dr. Baishivan, uh, that was a very very nice talk. Uh, uh, we started with something uh, like uh, you explained about the basics of the fibers. And then you went to the speciality fibers, and then you explained the, the process. And the ultimate aim, you also explained about the biosimating talk which you gave today. And thank you very much for this wonderful talk. Uh, I have known you as a OSA workshop. You were, you train a lot of people on the workshop. Uh, it was a paid visits which you do all the time, paid talks, but this was so nice of you that you gave a very broad outline today. I'm sure our audience had a good exposure here. So many thanks to you, Dr. Wang. Uh, I also thank all the participants. I know a lot of questions has not been answered, uh, but what we will try to do is uh, collect these information, whatever queries you asked, I will try to put it on an email, uh, answer them to you at the earliest. And I also thank uh, the organizers today, uh, the marketing team, and of course, Rizwan, who did a very good moderation today. Uh, thank you very much for all your participation. And thank you, Dr. Bang, once, once again, Vaishi Bang, for your excellent talk. We wish to have you in many more webinars with us so that we can cover many different topics. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, have a nice evening. Uh, with this, uh, we can conclude this session today. And we will be assuring you that all your emails will be answered, all your queries, respond and answer. Thank you once again. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, I look thank forward you. to seeing you maybe sometime in India as well. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Sure, sure. Thank yeah. you. Uh, a picture? We can conclude this session. Yes, sir, yes.